This is a story about a small town on the eastern shore, a town that's picture perfect. But inside this tiny community of Oxford, Maryland, there's a big problem. What? And it's called a lack of transparency. This is your opinion? It's a fact. The problem started during the height of the COVID pandemic. Behind closed doors, the town's three commissioners, John Pepe, Gordon Graves, and Gordon Franck, created a new position which totally changed the way the town operates. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Cheryl Lewis was originally hired as the town clerk, but then one day in 2020, without the town's knowledge, the Oxford commissioners promoted her to town manager, and with it came a lot more power and apparently a lot more cash. Oxford's so small it doesn't even have a stoplight, but its 600 residents are paying its town manager around $70,000 more than the average rate. In 2022, Lewis made $178,000. Damn. Cheryl Lewis appears to be the highest paid town manager in the state of Maryland. Oh, are you kidding me? If you look at nearby towns like Cambridge, St. Michael's, Chestertown, and Berlin, tiny Oxford is paying its town manager tens of thousands of dollars more each year. What? And all four of those towns have a larger population and a larger economy. <laughs> if we take a look at Frederick, Maryland, its population is 130 times larger than Oxford, but its top administrator, which is the mayor, makes around $70,000 less than Lewis. $70,000. No. But for many residents, finding how much Lewis makes isn't easy. Just finding the budget for Oxford is like a scene out of Mission Impossible. And if you do find the budget, the town manager's salary doesn't seem to be anywhere in sight. As town manager, Lewis knows a lot about the residents of Oxford, but many know very little about her. She lives near Trapp, Maryland, on a farm with her partner, John Foster. Lewis often uses the Foster farm as her home office. Many residents say the town's transparency flew out the window the day Lewis became the town manager and started wielding more power. One of her first major acts was to create a lucrative job for her daughter. No, no, no. After that, she hired two maintenance workers who rent homes that appear to be attached to the foster farm. So far, she hasn't addressed the possibility of this landlord arrangement. The rental properties are part of an LLC that borders Lewis's home address. What? As the new town manager, Lewis quickly asked for the resignation of the director of maintenance, Scott DeLude and he was replaced by her boyfriend's nephew, who lives in a house paid primarily by the taxpayers of Oxford. What? Are you kidding me? After that, the chief of police, Pat Maxwell, was asked to resign. What the hell are you talking about? The residents of Oxford had zero input. Together, DeLude and Maxwell served the town for 48 years. Chief Maxwell was two years away from retirement. This peaceful community on the eastern shore went into a tailspin. And I'm here to say that Pat Maxwell has done more for this town than any one of you sitting there, that any one of you could ever do. It is a public office. There needs to be public information provided. None of that happens, and you should all be ashamed of yourselves. Calling yourselves representatives of our town, you're not representing any of us. I think the commissioners and the town manager have been uh, incredibly transparent with us about how they feel about the people they represent. <laughs> and I'm telling you, what goes around comes around, and you are in deep doo-doo. The town's lawyer, Lindsay Ryan and Cheryl Lewis, refused to answer any questions regarding why two of the most beloved employees were let go. Desperate for answers, the residents have submitted a record number of public information acts, which reportedly has made the legal budget for this tiny town skyrocket. Damn. All of these PIAs have been good for business for the town's lawyer, who is also Cheryl Lewis's personal lawyer in Trap. 
What? And when it comes to lack of transparency, Oxford seems to stand out. If you click on places like St. Michael's and Rock Hall, transparency is thriving. The town administrator's salary in St. Michael's is right there in black and white. And the town manager's salary in Rock Hall is so easy to find, it only took my 13-year-old daughter about 13 seconds. $40,659 this year. That's right. The town manager of Rock Hall, a town almost twice the size of Oxford, makes $143,000 less than Cheryl Lewis. Can I go now? No town is perfect when it comes to transparency. But when a small town of 600 people are paying the town manager a ton of cash, one might think it would be clearly listed. I decided to bring in some serious brain power. The first person I contacted was my cousin Boyce Rensberger. Boyce is a former science writer for the New York Times and he worked at MIT. He knows practically everything. In fact, he's written the book on how the world works. So I asked him to find Cheryl Lewis's salary. No financial reports. But Boyce didn't have much luck. So I turned to a young tech professional in Indianapolis named Hunter Haynes. Okay, Oxford, you're making someone really search here. Hunter couldn't find it either, but I refused to give up. I contacted Bill Kubota, a documentary producer in Detroit. Where do you look? I don't know. After that, I gave Professor John Goheen in Chicago a try. Not really having much luck. The endless adventure of finding Cheryl Lewis's salary became almost comical. I reached out to a lawyer in Warsaw, Poland, and then had a Chinese law student give it a crack. Finally, I gave it one last shot. Richard Shankman lives in Seattle. He's a Vassar grad, a presidential historian, and a New York Times best-selling author. What the hell? As it turns out, the only way anyone can find Lewis's salary is to jump through several obstacles. And even then, you might not find it. You gotta be kidding me. And just maybe that's by design. Cheryl Lewis is not only the town manager, she's also the town treasurer. You gotta be kidding me. Sandra Bullock's not the only person frustrated. The residents of Oxford want answers. But here's the twist. Cheryl Lewis isn't responsible for the lack of transparency. The three commissioners are. Every time the town manager makes a decision, at least two of the three commissioners have to approve it. So don't blame Lewis for her high salary, hiring family and friends, and getting rid of essential workers. Susan Delane Botkin lost the last commissioner's race, but got the job anyway. An outgoing commissioner handed her his seat. No! As a result, the one commissioner who was rejected by the voters is now often the deciding vote, allowing Cheryl Lewis to do whatever she wants. That's right. The person who lost the election is arguably the most powerful person in this lack of transparency town.